In this video, I'm going to do a valve clearance adjustment on a Honda GX31 four-stroke single cylinder engine. And the uh, first steps in doing this adjustment is to remove the starter recoil assembly, the throttle cable, uh, this red plastic shroud, and the spark plug. And you want to do the uh, valve clearance adjustment with the engine cold. Okay, I'm going to remove the uh, starter recoil assembly and this uh, starter recoil assembly is held on by four bolts and each bolt is eight millimeter in size. And uh, then I'm going to reinsert uh, the two bottom bolts just to hold on this bracket that holds on the, secures the gas tank to the engine. And that's enough to hold it on. Now I'm ready to remove the throttle cable. I'm going to remove the air filter uh, housing cover. Uh, remove this uh, crankcase breather hose. And then I'm ready to just need to loosen up this one uh, nut and then pull the cable out. Uh, next thing I need to remove are the two bolts on this side of the engine. There's one here and one here and these uh, help secure the red shroud to the engine. Once these are removed I can pull off the shroud. And they're also 8 millimeters bolts. Now I'm ready to pull off this red shroud. Uh, I just need to pull the spark plug wire off, get it out of the way, kind of lift this out and pull up. And uh, You also need to disconnect the kill wire, I forgot about that. I hope you can see that in the camera. Move that and pull this off. Uh, the next thing that I need to do is remove the spark plug and the reason I'm doing that is it makes it easier to rotate the engine because the engine needs to be in a certain position before you can adjust the valves and also um, I can look through the spark plug hole and see when the piston is at top dead center with the spark plug removed so I, I need to remove that and uh, before you ever remove a spark plug always uh, if you have compressed air blow compressed air around the plug to remove any debris that could fall into the cylinder when you remove the plug. Um, if you don't have compressed air, just look and make sure that there's nothing there. Now I'm ready to uh, remove the valve cover. Uh, it's held on by these three bolts here. Um, they're all 8 millimeter bolts. This bolt here is shorter than the other two, so when you go to reassemble it, make sure the short bolt goes here. Um, it's always a good idea to wipe this down before you remove it. That way um, you lessen the chance of any dirt uh, dropping into the engine, and I've already done that. Uh, after you get the bolts out, sometimes these covers will stick. Um, the way that you can get it off or break it free is just to use the end of a, a plastic screwdriver and lightly tap it. Uh, once it breaks free, that tapping, the tone of the tapping noise will change, and then you can just lift the cover off. So. All right, here are the uh, valves for this engine. This is the intake valve and this is the exhaust valve. Uh, the way that I know that is the intake valve is connected to the intake port, which I can see cast into the cylinder head here. And it's closest to the carburetor, which is connected to your intake port. Carburetor's right here. Uh, the exhaust valve is connected to your exhaust port and I can see the exhaust port right here. And uh, the exhaust valve is close, usually closest to the um, muffler which I can see right here which is connected to my um, exhaust port. 
Now, uh, I need to rotate this engine in the direction that the engine normally runs in, and the way that I can determine that is I can um, uh, look at my uh, starter recoil and see which way the starter recoil turns the engine when you start the engine, and that is the direction of engine rotation. So what I want to do is uh, rotate the engine by hand in that direction. I want to look for the intake valve to start to open. Uh, when that happens, I know that the intake or the piston is moving down and it's, in, it's during the uh, intake stroke of the piston. Um, the next stroke for this engine is the compression stroke. Um, ultimately, I want to position the piston at top dead center on the compression stroke. So as soon as I see this intake valve start to open, I'm going to insert a, um, gently insert a Phillips screwdriver into the cylinder, wait for the piston to come back up on that next stroke, which I know is the compression stroke, and when it's at its top position, um, I'll know that that's top dead center for the compression stroke. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn the engine. Again, I'm going to look for that intake valve to start to open. There's my exhaust stroke, my exhaust valve's uh, opening up. So my next stroke should be the uh, intake stroke, and uh, there it is. Intake valve starting to open, so I'm going to take the, my Phillips screwdriver and insert it into the cylinder here. And that's my intake stroke, pistons moving down. The next stroke is the compression stroke. And when my uh, screwdriver moves up to its top position, I'll know that uh, that's top dead center on the compression stroke, which is right there. After you find top dead center on the compression stroke, you want to come around to the other side of the engine where your flywheel is at. And one of the fins, this is a fin on a flywheel, this is another fin. One of the fins will have a notch cut into it, uh, which you can see right here. Uh, you want to find that fin, and you want to align that notch with this uh, metal uh, projection here that's cast into the uh, this uh, cover here on the engine. And so I'm going to remove the flywheel by hand, line it up, and as soon as you have that lined up, you're ready to adjust the valves. Once the uh, piston is at top dead center on the compression stroke and the flywheel is aligned, you should be able to move the rocker arms freely. Shouldn't be any resistance. Uh, and once you're at this point, you're ready to adjust the valves. Uh, adjusting the valves means you want to check the clearance between the end of the rocker arm here and the uh, valve stem. Uh, the clearance for this intake valve should be uh, 0.12 millimeters, plus or minus 0.02 millimeters. So. Uh, you can adjust this intake valve anywhere from uh, 0.10 to 0.14 millimeters. And for the exhaust valve, it should be uh, 0.15 millimeters plus or minus 0.02 millimeters. So it can be anywhere from 0.13 to 0.17 millimeters. At the other end of this, this rocker arm, I have my uh, lock nut. And in the center of that, I have my adjusting screw. If I need to change the distance between my rocker arm and my valve stem, what I do is I loosen up this lock nut, then I'm free or able to uh, rotate this adjusting screw either right or left, uh, either decreasing or increasing the distance between the rocker arm and the valve stem. Once I have the uh, uh, distance between the valve stem and the rocker arm set, I hold this adjusting screw uh, to keep it from moving, and at the same time I lock down this uh, lock nut. All right, I'm going to start off by uh, first adjusting the intake valve. Um, I've got a feeler gauge that's 0.127 millimeters thick. Here's the feeler gauge. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place the feeler gauge in between the uh, intake rocker arm and the uh, intake valve stem. And I should just get a light drag. If it's, too, if it's too tight or too loose, what you do is you take your wrench, loosen up the uh, lock nut on the adjusting screw, then take your Allen wrench, this happens to be an Allen screw for the adjusting screw. So I'm going to take my Allen wrench, um, turn the adjusting screw, and turn it until I just get a light drag when I move the feeler gauge in and out. Once I have it set correctly, I'm going to hold my adjusting screw still, keep it from moving, and I'm going to tighten the uh, adjusting screw lock nut. Then I can um, recheck my clearance to make sure that it's still set correctly, which it is. And now I'm going to repeat the process on the uh, exhaust valve. Um, I'm going to be using a feeler gauge that is 
0.152 millimeters thick. Insert it between the uh, rocker arm and the exhaust valve stem and you should get a light drag. This is a little uh, loose so I'm going to go ahead and adjust it. You want to loosen up your adjusting lock, lock nut. Um, turn your adjusting screw in or out to change the clearance and you should just get a light drag which is about right there. Once you got that hold your adjusting screw, tighten down your your lock nut and recheck your clearance and that's about perfect. So uh, once you're uh, done adjusting the valves, you're ready to reassemble everything. Uh, Honda uses a, a cork gasket for this valve cover, so you should replace this gasket every time you remove the uh, cover. You can see here how I, I ripped it when I, when I took the cover off. Um, it's actually stuck to the, to the cover. Uh, Honda recommends uh, doing a valve adjustment on, this, on the GX31 every 200 hours. Um, couple of things that can happen if you don't adjust the valves. If they get too loose, um, it can affect volumetric efficiency because uh, it won't push the valve open far enough and uh, it doesn't stay open as long um, as if the, the valves were adjusted correctly. If they're too tight, it can hold the valve open and it can actually burn the face of the valve. So it's an important um, maintenance uh, uh, task that should be performed according to Honda every 200 hours. So. Anyway, uh, hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.